Welcome to the Writer Read Short Stories. Today's reading is Reluctant Liaison, Part 2. The pixies waited. I couldn't see them, but I could hear their wings doing double time. I wish they'd go away, but I doubted that was ever going to happen. When I'd pulled myself back together, I shuffled sideways and felt around the space I was in. When nothing but cold stone met my fingers, I lay down on the rock and waited for my head to stop hurting. A small vibration reached me through the stone, and I heard the sound of deliberately shuffled feet. At the same time, the sound of whirring wings decreased. It sounded like they were landing. I waited until the whirring had ceased altogether. Where am I? In the other world. But didn't I not want to be here? It was here, or at the bottom of the cliff, under the car. Yeah, well, put that way. Fine, I said, hating how pathetic I sounded. So now what? We have to wait, the pixie said. The guardian should be here soon. Are you telling me there's no way out of this cave? The silence that followed was revealing, but all I could do was sigh. I closed my eyes and pressed my forehead against the stone. Maybe I'd remember why I hadn't wanted to go with them when I woke up. Maybe I'd even remember why I'd run away. And the troll. What did it have to do with anything? How could I forget a troll? Whatever else they had or hadn't done, at least the pixies let me sleep. They didn't even wake me when the guardian came, and I woke up covered by a soft warm blanket with my head on a pillow and the yellow glow of a lantern lighting up a room. The facilities are over there, said a voice with an oddly familiar twang. We can talk when you're done. I might have protested that I didn't need to use the facilities, but my bladder said otherwise, so I followed the direction his hand indicated and wondered where I'd seen that weather-beaten face before. I still hadn't placed it when I returned, so I tried for a smile and stretched out a hand in greeting. I'm... I paused as the pounding renewed in my head. You're concussed, he said, and we've met before, although I'd see you don't remember. I'm sorry, no, I agreed, but then my stomach lurched and I hurried back to the toilet. Better than on the floor, he said when I re-emerged. Let me take a look at you. He beckoned and I stepped closer. You know, in your world, I have a medical degree and twenty years of practice, but in this one, I'm only just finding my feet. He sat me down on a boulder and set a folding camp table before me. Unpacking a small medical bag containing a modern-looking set of equipment, he checked me over. Concussion, he said. Rest is the only cure. Great. He looked at me more closely. Do you remember what we talked about before? he asked. I started to shake my head, but stopped. Well, you need to rest. We'll revisit it in the morning. I looked around the cavern, wondering how he could tell what time of day it was, before catching a glimpse of the mobile phone he'd set beside the medical bag. Twenty-four hour time put us close to midnight. Well, that explained it. I looked around for the stuff I'd asked the pixies to retrieve from the car, trying to ignore the way the cavern dipped and swirled as I moved my head. Why hadn't I wanted to go to the other world? More importantly, why hadn't I wanted to go there badly enough to sneak out of the house and drive out along a troll-infested road? At night. I knew better than that. Hell, I'd been in on writing the manual for civilians trying to cope with a world where fairy tales and legends were a return to reality. What could possibly have driven me to risk becoming troll bait? I shuddered, shivering beneath the blanket and fighting down another wave of nausea. I was still worrying at the doctor's question when I fell asleep again. This time, when I woke up, I remembered exactly what we'd been talking about and why I'd run away. And here I was, in precisely the situation I'd been trying to avoid. Oh, hell no, I said when I opened my eyes and saw the doctor sitting beside the bed. There has to be another way. For a moment he looked sympathetic, but then the hardness around the corners of his mouth and the determination in his eyes firmed. There isn't, and you must. We've bought you all the time we could, when we told them about the accident. But I've never met the guy, and the Fay I've already met have been... Somewhere in a corner of the room I couldn't see, someone cleared their throat. 
I modified the language I'd been about to use. Speaking frankly might not be my wisest course here, no matter how good I'd gotten at it. Unpleasant. My prince will be most disheartened to hear that. This time the voice that spoke was full of veiled authority and sounded inconceivably smug, as though the speaker thought he'd won a fight I hadn't known I was in. Did you send the troll? I demanded, and the doctor drew a sharp breath. My lord, he began, as I pushed myself up on my elbow so I could see the elf in the room. Said elf raised his hand in order to silence if ever I'd seen one. It did not make me like him any more than I had before. The doctor subsided, and the elf, Lord, stepped forward. I managed to shuffle my way into a sitting position. Officer Mallory, he said, his words coming out on a sigh. I cocked an eyebrow and waited. It was as much a challenge as an invitation, but he took it anyway. His Highness seeks a treaty with your world. I opened my mouth, and he hastily amended his words. With your organisation. Again he raised his hand, demanding silence. This time I allowed him to continue. I understand that marriage is not the way your world does this kind of thing. I understand that a marriage will not change my prince's relationship with your organisation. He took a breath, looked directly into my eyes and continued. But my prince's people do not. Marriage has always been the way such alliances are cemented. If there is no wedding, they won't accept the peace between us. And there will be war. The peace. The war. And that was where the problem truly lay. The paranormal operations squad went after dust runners. But that wasn't the only kind of crime committed against magical creatures returning to our world. There were worse. Trafficking in elf flesh, for instance. That had come as a nasty surprise. We'd thought we'd been going up against dust runners, smugglers who murdered pixies and harvested their dust for illegal consumption. What a surprise to find something entirely more ugly. Trolls, it seems, pay well for elf flesh, and the fresher, the better. The prince was trying to smooth over what had happened when the squad had hit the trafficking operation with all the right intentions and entirely the wrong tools. Elves had died. The fact that trolls and traffickers had died in greater numbers had not been enough for forgiveness. The elves liaising with the squad had warned their human counterparts of the trouble to come. They'll want a leader, the elven commander had said, a human leader, preferably a uniformed officer. But they can't, the captain had protested. We can't. You must. The captain had glared at him, and the uniformed human leaders who'd been in command of the raid waited. Marriage? Seriously? And what if we don't? It was the first time any of us had seen an elf go pale. The very first time an elven commander had showed open uncertainty by exchanging glances with his lieutenants. The first time a lieutenant had almost spoken out of turn. Almost. The lieutenant in question had licked his lips and then pressed them firmly together as his commander had turned back to face the human captain. If you do not, he had said, and hesitated, if you do not, then there will be war. They will slaughter every human they encounter until amends are made. But it was not our fault, the captain had protested. We were trying to rescue them. And you failed. The words had fallen like a death knell. But we tried, and because of your intervention, those people are dead. They would have died even if we had not intervened. Yes, but then the blood debt would have fallen on the traffickers and the trolls. That's insane! That is elvish law. That those who offer aid are held to blame if anything goes wrong. That those who intervene when they have not been asked are held to blame for the outcome of their interference. But they didn't even know their people were being held. Hell, even we did not know their people were being held. That doesn't matter. It was your intervention that caused their people to die. Indirectly. Yes, we know, but these are the laws of the other world. We aren't in the other world. No, but there are those who remember when you were subject to it. 
and alliance is the only way to move that understanding forward. But we can't, the elf commander had shrugged. A war would do just as well to establish that the rules have changed. But a war, the captain had almost choked on the words. Try it again. A, a war. A war would destroy what has been achieved so far, the elven commander had replied. And it would end any hope of peaceful interaction between our worlds. The doorways cannot be closed again. You would be left fighting more than trolls. And you? There had been pity in the elf's eyes.